Well, as many of you have figured out now, I am not in Ontario. Uh, Chris Christopher will be driving, looks like money tonight. I am in Ohio. I left this morning. Um, uh, I left uh, early this morning, or earlier this afternoon, to come over here. Obviously, we had an incident yesterday uh, with Union Suit. Um, I told you guys many times that over the last 25 years as a trainer and being involved with the stable, I guess, um, I've had four horses have to have an operation for colic surgery. Three of them were in the last six weeks. Not a position I want to be in, but it leaves me reflecting, um, after something like that happens, it, could it have been avoided you know did we do did I do something wrong uh, horses will man they'll test you all all the time and um, when it came to punch the clock and unfortunately the passing of Sully's Sully's landing um, I learned a lot about colics because when you say colic it's this huge umbrella right this this massive thing this word that means so much but really means so little because it, it doesn't really tell you anything. Oh, the horse call it. Oh, that could mean a million things. We have horses call it all the time. You'll come in, they'll be pawing at the stall. Maybe they didn't eat all their lunch, breakfast, supper, whatever, what have you. They just don't look comfortable. They're colicking. Generally, when that happens, uh, banamine, an anti-inflammatory is given. The veterinarian will come in, usually run some fluids if needed. And if that doesn't work, usually it's a, a rinse and repeat type situation where you, in an hour or so, you'll go back in and, and uh, uh, run fluids and anti-inflammatories again. Now you have uh, old horsemen always have their remedies, right? Uh, put the horse in the trailer, take him for a ride. The thing you're trying to do in that case is to try to get the horse to empty out. Um, now when it came to Sully and Punch the Clock, they didn't empty out very good for a day or two. They were really picky, wouldn't go near their feed, wouldn't look at their feed, but there was no acute soreness, pain, where you see them kind of wince and dig and paw, or maybe they get down. Another telltale sign of colic is when the horses get down and get back up and get down and get back up. Just that look of discomfort is, uh, is um, a foreshadowing, if you will, of what's about to come, or could come. Um, yesterday... Uh, Jason called me to say that, well, rewind. Jason told me that he had uh, done a walkthrough yesterday at 2.30 in the afternoon and everything is uh, everything was perfectly fine. At 4 o'clock, uh, they were starting to get Macho Martini ready to get raced and um, feed and whatnot. And he said that um, Union Suit was cast. They got him off the wall. Now, for a cast, for those of you who don't know, when a horse is cast, they're stuck up against the wall. They roll up against the wall or whatever, and they're, st they're stuck. Some horses thrash around, and other horses just kind of wait for you to come and help them out. Now, for the horses that thrash, there's usually the stall is banged up. There's a loud ruckus. You can hear it shed rows away. You know when a horse is cast. If you're 25 feet away and you hear that sound, that ruckus, you know, hey, there's a horse cast. We better get down. And anyway, nobody had... Uh, there was no noise, there was no sounds, it was just cast. So they got him off the wall, got him up, everything seemed fine. About an hour later, he started act colicky a little bit. Digging in his stall, laying down, getting up. Right away, uh, Jason, uh, he heard him digging and he heard him get down and get up and called the veterinarian. Now our, our veterinarian, Dr. Latessa, is on site for Lasex last night. So he was there at the track. Immediately came over. They treated him with banamine, ran some fluids into him, as you generally do, and assumed that was the end of it. We have horses that are acting colicky all the time. It's the weather and what now that the mares are coming in to see. Anytime a horse ties up, they act a little colicky too sometimes. Many times. So all this is going on. It never dawns anybody that the horse is in any sort of danger. An hour goes by, still acting a little colicky, so they give him some more anti-inflammatory and some more fluids. That should do it. 
within another half an hour, you now he's starting to act worse. Dr. Latessa calls me, Jason calls me, what are we going to do? I said, well, obviously I defer to the veterinarian. What do you think, Dr. Latessa? You probably should take him to the clinic. Took him to the clinic. Surgeon called me right away, said uh, we're going to have to operate on, on uh, Union Suit. Okay. Within half an hour, he was gone. Gone. So, you're always left wondering. As I said at the start of this video, could I have done something differently? Did I do something wrong? Did we do something wrong? And as I said, when it came to Punch the Clock and Sully's Landing, although we didn't know what happened, we got somewhat of a cloudy picture of what took place. There was something happened that affected their small colon, which affected the rest of their um, <clears throat> intestine and colon. In Punch the Clock's cl case, uh, two extensive surgeries later, and we saved her. We weren't so lucky with Sully's Landing. Now with Union Suit, we know what happened with him. When they opened him up, he had a torsion of the large colon, which I had to look it up. It meant uh, he had a tear. Now I talked to Dr. Latessa extensively because I felt bad for him too. Not just us, all our clients, but he took Sully's Landing really hard. Dr. Latessa strikes me as a gentleman that, that wants to know and takes responsibility. He felt bad, I believe, about Sully's Landing, even though he was way out in front of it. He started treating that horse before before you would. And only because of what was going on with Punch the Clock, what had just taken place with Punch the Clock, he wanted to be super safe and super careful, and the horse still ended up passing. And it really bothered him. For a week, you know, I was getting text messages at all hours of the day. You know, I talked to a, a leading surgeon in Kentucky, and this is what he said. I talked to this person, that person. This is a smart person. This is what they thought. Never really found anything conclusive. But even somebody as meticulous as Dr. Latessa had to step back and say, okay, I guess I'm going to have to just go with, I don't really know, because the horse is gone. And when it came to Union Suit, we knew what had happened, and, and, and he said it was nothing like the other two, totally different. He believed that he did get down, and that he was cast, and he struggled when he was cast for a short period of time, and he may have injured that large colon, that they were able to treat him with anti-inflammatories that colic as it started to get worse wasn't necessarily him getting worse quite frankly it was him passing away he just didn't know it yet aside from building round stalls and putting cameras up and having security on each stall 24 7 there's no possible way to stop that from happening Every week, we have a horse or two that's cast. Just part of life. So I'm left wondering what, what can we do differently. I don't think there's anything we can do differently, but, um, you know, over the last year, uh, Steve, a client you guys hear, you've seen Steve and heard me talk with him, Steve Palermo. A uh, good friend and a client's in the insurance industry and so is Jeff Ruck. And they work diligently to put together this plan. Now, it wouldn't help us in this case because it was more fire-related. Uh, you know, if we happen to, God forbid, lose an entire burn, how catastrophic that would be for us. Um, you know, they said it, it's unlikely, but it could happen. And if it did, you'd be done. You'd be done. Probably right. So kind of a, an odd segue, but nevertheless, something I've been thinking about. And when it comes to uh, issues with these young horses like this, maybe rather than getting a 90-day policy from the from the sale, because Union Suit is not covered, maybe we get a year a, a year policy through the end of 2023. I assume they're they're available. 
I never would have got one, and I don't insure my particular horses. But after the year we've had, man, it's got me shaking my head a little bit. So that's how my day started, quite poorly. Last night, I got the news at, at uh, 9.27 that he had passed away. I believe it was 9.27. I didn't sleep at all last night. And then, as you can imagine, a lot of the younger people we hired over here pretty shook up over this. So I decided to come over here on Monday rather than come over on Wednesday just for drone day and show up here Tuesday night and get on the jog cart and go with the babies Wednesday morning. I wanted to be here tomorrow. Is there anything I need to do for anybody over here? Is everybody okay over here? How do the babies look? I want to take a closer look at them. So, I told Harry I wouldn't be available tonight. That uh, He made the decision that Chris Christopher was going to drive Looks Like Money. And that we were going to um, you know, look forward to next week, so to speak. So, um, hopefully we start the week racing with good luck, because we certainly didn't start it in the burn with good luck. Um, I did have a couple of horses to the veterinarian today also. Many of you know, uh, we scratched um, absolute euphoria. The other day, she was coughing a little bit, but she was a little bit off left front too. And I thought there might be something going on with her knee. So I wasn't there. So I told Cindy, and I made a point to call James before the races, said, would you mind going last trip with Absolute Euphoria? And if she is not 100% scratch her. And that's exactly what he did. We had her looked at today. Very faint line in her left knee. Not shocking uh, at all, you know. In fact, uh, almost reassuring in the sense that she always had that wrinkle to her. Probably always that line. And obviously we didn't hurt her. She walks sound on it. Seems fine on it. Uh, the veterinarian just said, two weeks in the stall three, four weeks in the pool, we'll re-x-ray. I was going to only race her three, three, four times anyway and turn her out because we do have all of 2023 in Ohio ahead for her. And I do think she's a pretty talented filly. So, yeah, would have been nice to have three or four starts and not have a line in the knee, but a line in the knee that is very faint, just present. We didn't hurt her. You know, she, she only had a very few, very, very few off steps and then they jogged and she jogged fine in the warm up it was when they went back out to go their mile that James said he noticed a, a little bit of a head nod and, and was taking no chances so he just scratched her she'll be fine uh, Matt's MVP had him up today um, knees bother him not shocking hind ankles a little more telling um, we'll see how he races on Thursday but he should be a little more comfortable on Thursday I believe um, my 1% we're going to make a little shoeing change on my 1%. Now, I didn't really agree with James, and he needed flip-flops, but nevertheless, he made a break. James is sitting behind him. If he thinks flip-flops are a better fit for him, great. I know when I trained him the other day, I thought he was good, but that certainly wasn't racing speed. So we'll see how that plays out, but my eyes will be peeled on tonight. Mohawk, unbeatable camp. I'm expecting a pretty good mile from him. LD's Patrick, pretty good mile from him. And... Oh, I do have to take this. One second. 